I'm just going to go through on how to take a simple PyTorch model that was written in Python and then bringing it to the C++ side. So the first thing we'll do is just go into an empty directory. Once you're done there, we'll need a few files. So we'll have to create a models directory to save our models. We'll also need a build directory for our C++ side. I mean, oops, my bad. We'll make our models directory, right? And our build directory. So we have these two right here. And we need a couple files. So we need our CMake file. So I already have that written up. I'll leave a link to this in the description. Um, all it is, you can see right here, I went through this in the previous videos on my PyTorch. Oops, wrong vid, wrong one. Um, all it is is, you know, just a simple file that you need to build everything. One second, so I grab it. Okay, so I'll show you the file right now. Here it is. It's just our requirements that we need to do. We'll have our main CPP file, um, require PyTorch, just the simple stuff that we need. Make sure you have LibTorch installed, all the stuff that you need. So I already went through this. If you don't understand it, just go through my previous videos. It's e either in lesson one or two, part one or two, and you should find out everything you need to know. Um, I already have this written down, so I'll leave a link to this repository so you can get the file. All right, so we need two other files. We need our main file and we need our models file models.py so here's everything I'll clear this out here's everything we need we need a build directory CMake list main our main file our models and our yeah our models so let's start with the models because that's what we need to do first so first thing we'll do is import, import what we need so we'll just import torch and we'll import torch nn functional. All right, so let's make our network. Let's make a new network. So this will be simple. If you don't know how to do this, um, you can just go to pytorch.org, I believe, and just go through the tutorials, and it'll show you how to make a model. All right, so let's define our initializers. Just going through basic stuff, making the model. Um, so. It. All right, so let's have just have two layers, layer one, layer two. And we'll just say takes in 100, outputs 256. And for layer two, it takes in a hundred, it takes in 256. Outputs one. All right, simple. Two layers. Let's make a forward pass. Here's what we'll do here. We we'll say x. We we'll just add a value on top of this. Oops, my bad. Self. Dot layer one. Oops. Takes an x. X is equal to f. Dot value. Self. Dot layer two. Takes an x. And let's return X. So this is not to do anything special. Um, we're not training anything here. We're just creating a model. Now we need to prepare this so we can transfer it onto the C++ side. So what we'll do is this trace network torch .jit trace. We'll trace this model. And it needs an example input. So what we'll do here is torch by batch size by you know however it needs to input we set it at a hundred and then from there we just save this mod this file so that's all you have to do and you can just say trace net and wherever you want to save it and this is it 
So we made the file, we made the model, um, we traced it, we saved it. Simple. Let's run this. I'm going to run this right now. No errors, and now we can actually come out of here. Again, we have a models directory, and we go into there, and you can see our file. Now let's actually go on to the um, let's go on to the C++ side. So let's do that right now. And I'll keep the uh, model side open too for reference. Uh, we'll do our basic includes. Okay, so let's do what we need to do. First thing we need to do is reference this file that we made, that net.pt file. So what we do, say torch jit script module, and we'll call this net, and we'll load that file in. Um, important thing to reference, when you're running something, we're going to run this through the build directory. So we need to recognize that that file that we're running is going to be inside of a directory. So we need to hop out of that directory. We're not referencing everything from this main file. We're doing something inside of the build directory. And then we run models and net.pt. There we go. Uh, Why is my Vim not working? Okay. There we go. Um, so that's the first thing we need to do. The next thing we need to do is um, create a tensor that we want to put pass through. So you can see right here we made this 1 by 100. So we'll do the same thing over here. No problem. I believe I need this too. I'm not sure, but I, just to be safe, I'll add this in. And we'll set this one by 100. And let's actually um, test things out before we continue. So I'll, I'll be real simple here. I'll just print out X. This is just a simple way just to make sure things are working. Um, like I said, let's go into that build directory. And if you haven't, go through the previous tutorials. I have links to everything there so you won't get lost when you get to this part. So we'll do simple stuff. Okay, everything passed. And let's see if our tensor pops out. waiting and there we go let's see what happens if I take this out if that's actually needed okay it's not needed so these are the only two imports you probably need all right so let's actually go on to the next thing um, we need to set this into a specific type in order to pass this into uh, this model. So we need to have this vector and it'll take in this IV value, I value, and we'll call it an input. And what we'll do, we'll just push this tensor into there. All right, so now we'll do a forward pass. And all this auto does, if you don't know, it just set the type to whatever the return of this whole function is. So next thing we do, let's print this out. And 
And if you don't believe me, let's check the type out as well. Let's break this apart too. Let's get the name. And here we go. So forward pass, we're printing out, we'll get the type that this is as well. So let's go here, run it. And you can see everything right here. Uh, let's find a for loop. Let's do a bunch of for passes. So, oh, by the way, you can see the type as well. It's right here. Let's take this out, and let's do a for loop. Oh, getting confused. Oh, my equals zero. Uh, I less than ten. I plus plus. And let's see. We'll run through this 10 times. Uh, did I have a mistake? Um, is this supposed to be comma or semicolon? Into me. Oh, I see the problem. And we get a bunch of zeros back. You could run this a bunch of times. I don't. Really, it doesn't really matter what the output is. Which I just wanted to demonstrate on how to run a forward pass. So, run this as many times as you want. See what you get back. Now we get these numbers back. Um, so, I'm not really concerned about what this is actually returning. more so just making sure we can make a forward pass. So it's real simple. Does It's not a lot of line of code. So if you have a model or you want to do some transfer learning and put it on this C++ side or whatever you want to do with a model, you can just transfer it over to C++ and do whatever you need to do with it. That's all. It's just a simple run through on how to take something on the Python side and put it on the C++ side.